Change your diet, change your life, change the planet. Someone came up to me today and just hammered me. <laughs> Protein deficient, iron deficient, this deficient, <laughs> that deficient. Because this naturopath said, oh, you're vegan, you're raw vegan, you're going to die. You need <laughs> animal products. And here's why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For half an hour, this guy grilled me today because my naturopath said this. And he said, you need heme iron. And I hear this all the time. Especially runners talk about this because runners are usually a little bit more knowledgeable of body chemistry because they have to be or they're going to get sick. Especially women. You can become anemic. The reason being, uh, anybody that's in a sport where there's an impact, running, constant impact, especially the barefoot runners. I'm sorry, I take that back. Didn't mean to point at you. Barefoot running puts a lot of stress on the bottom of the foot. And even runners with padded shoes create a situation known as foot strike hemolysis. Hemo means blood, lysis means breakdown. So you're breaking down your blood cells every foot strike, even if you have padded shoes on. If you're not wearing padded shoes, you're breaking down a lot more because you're putting bone and pavement or whatever surface and you've got a little bit of skin with some blood going and you're crushing it, crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. The skin will get stronger. It'll develop calluses. So you'll adapt, but you're destroying blood cells. And even with the cushion shoes, you're destroying blood cells, which is why women athletes become anemic because they're doing a lot of blood cell destruction and they've got to replace that. So iron is really essential to athletes, especially barefoot runners, because you're doing a lot of blood cell destruction. And, you know, if you want to improve, you've got to make sure that you're replacing those cells so you can carry oxygen. Otherwise, your performance will dive. So we've been told that heme iron, which is the iron from meat, hemoglobin, okay, we're told that that is, that is the best iron for a human being. But we don't get our iron from hemoglobin in meat because they drain most of the blood out. When you're eating chicken, it's not bloody. Right? We get it actually from something called myoglobin, which is muscle. Okay? Myo means muscle. And myoglobin doesn't have as much iron as hemoglobin anyways. So we're not getting as much heme iron as you think. In fact, 80% of the iron that a standard Canadian eater gets is from plants. 80%. Only 20%. We're talking about people that eat meat. We're talking about people that drink dairy. People that do cheese and all the animal products. 80% of their iron intake comes from plants. There's a lot of iron in plants. Only 20% is heme. Because they're not eating plants. Well, they eat some plants. You can eat french fries. That's a plant. The bun on the burger, that's a plant. The little pickle, that's a plant. You know, they're getting a lot of... Yeah, and also bread products. All grain products, pretty much, cereals and breads, have iron added to it. If you look on the label, it'll say reduced iron. What does that mean, reduced iron? It means that in chemistry, you have reduction and you have oxidation. And there's, a, there's an acronym, oil rig. Oxidation is losing an electron. Reduction is gaining an electron, so oil rig. So when you oxidize something, you lose an electron. Oxygen comes along and takes your electron away from you. You're now oxidized. Reduction is when you get an electron. Reduction is gaining. So they take the iron, they add some electrons to it. It has now been reduced chemically, and now it behaves differently because the plant irons, unless they're reduced, are difficult to absorb. So they would tell us, okay, yeah, we're getting 80% of our iron from plant sources, but if it's not reduced, you're not really absorbing it. So they put reduced iron in your bread products and your grain products so that you absorb it. They don't put heme iron in your bread products. They put reduced plant iron in there. What's really good at reducing iron? Vitamin C. Broccoli's full of vitamin C. Oranges, not as much vitamin C as they tell you, but there's quite a bit in there. Cherries full of vitamin C, uh, asparagus full of vitamin C, kiwis full of vitamin C, on and on and on and on and on. Peppers full of vitamin C. 
vitamin C in a lot of different things. So, for instance, if you're eating a salad, and there's a lot of iron in dark leafy greens, and you put some lemon juice on there, you've just added some vitamin C. You put some red pepper in there, you've just added some vitamin C. Broccoli, vitamin C. So you're now going to get the iron out of those greens, which is one of the reasons you put citrus in salad dressings, to help reduce the iron in the greens so that you can absorb it. So even though in its natural state, these plant irons aren't readily absorbable, you can make them readily absorbable. And they've also found recently that there's another pathway for iron absorption. They found this out in the last six months, that we actually absorb a lot more plant irons than they thought to begin with, even without them being reduced. So this is turning the heme thing on its head even more, because we can reduce them, but maybe we don't need to reduce as much of them. So you really don't need to worry about it, as long as you're eating a wide variety of plant foods, and especially dark greens.